everybody. Um, I'm Elena Kumbuzi, the coordinator to Canal Craft. We have text today because we can't trust ourselves. Um, so this is Tommy Lawton, a long-term Canal volunteer, a sailor, boat fanatic, and Canal historian. So Tommy is an active member of the Fourth and Clyde Canal Society uh, and other canal organizations for over 40 years. And he's also a mentor for the Canal College, which you will hear later on. Uh, our talk focuses on Canal Craft, uh, a project, uh, Canal Craft project, and Tommy will introduce the context within this uh, uh, Canal Craft has developed. Good afternoon, folks. Um, just to bring you up to speed, um, basically the slides I have up here, the canal was the M80 or, or the M8 of the 1700s, with over a million and a half tons of goods going through it each year. The Industrial Revolution uh, was well underway, and here in Mary Hill we had shipbuilding, both in Kirk and Tiller, Mary Hill, with shipbuilding, engineering, foundries, also there was some mining, and once they were all just little weavers' towns. This one, is it? January 1963, the Secretary of State for Scotland announced that the canal had to be closed to build a trunk road to Stirling. Now, why you wanted to go to Stirling, I don't know, but never mind. Those people had drowned in the canal, and dumping and legal vandalism took place. Now, this is the old road bridge to Stirling, and this is the new M80. That is not a bridge there, that's a culvert that we just walked through. But you can see the sort of thing we were up against within a matter of 20 years, nothing but rubbish, boats left to rot, and I say children playing in unsafe places, uh, and there was lots of drownings. The Canal Society had succeeded in getting people on the canal, first in an old work boat, which was one of the old work barges. When we bought it, we forgot to tell us it was in 20 feet of water. Uh, then, with the things moving on, we bought the two governed ferries and had one of them transferred up to Kirk and Tiller to operate. Thank you, thank you. With a new boat built, the Gypsy Princess, and our later, latest vessel here, with the help of lottery money, uh, is a cruise boat that will take up to 55 passengers. Due to the ongoing programmes, we found a gap which engaged with the community, which didn't engage with the community, and therefore, so the sense of ownership of the waterway was failing to the general public. There was a sense of locals watching developments occur without having any input of what was actually happening. Consultation had taken place in many areas in the green spaces and the maintenance of the fabric of the canal um, did not emphasise the boating aspect of it. So within this context, the Fourth and Clay Canal Society was exploring new possibilities with uh, engagement. When I, at the same time, started uh, research with the University of the Western Scotland, looking at public engagement with the waterways in and around Glasgow, uh, we decided to put the two together and go for funding to support a year-long community engagement project for the society, and so the idea for Canal Craft was born. Uh, we established the communities we want to work with, and we started the consultation. Uh, we chose two areas of the canal, Kirkintiloch, a canal town outside Glasgow, where the society's base of operations are and has a long and rich history of boat building, and Mary Hill in Glasgow, because it's a uh, rich industrial heritage which would help us renew the society's ties with the city. We targeted hard-to-reach groups that do not usually engage with heritage and who live and work in close proximity to the waterway. We focused on women and young people, as these groups are underrepresented in engineering and boating activities, and also because the society felt that these groups would be good candidates to join the society in the future as volunteers or members. In the consultation, we also included groups from other areas near the canal, in Lamb Hill and Milton, we were surprised by the results and the different views people had about the canal. Mixed attitudes were revealed towards the, mon the monument. Uh, uh, the younger participants appeared not to know much about the canal. They seemed to engage primarily with the towpath. The group of migrant women uh, we consulted had generally a positive outlook uh, towards the canal. They had learned a few things about it as they had visited local museums. 
the local women, um, many of them had grown up during the canal's closure, and they remembered deaths and accidents of people they knew, and they had grown up with a feeling that the canal is a dirty area of the city where criminal activity takes place. The biggest surprise was that none of the groups uh, were aware of the word heritage. We had to explain the word at every single meeting we had. Um, the consultation gave us a confirmation uh, that a new project to promote engagement was needed in the area, and we managed to persuade the Heritage Rotary Fund to support the activities. And the activities were all a history project involving the society's members, a new archive for the society, the building uh, of three boats and their oars, two films and two celebratory events. So we started the project with oral history. Uh, we collected some stories about the society from its long-term members with a questionnaire that the members themselves developed. The questions were not just about the story of the campaign and the formation of the society, but also about the society's role today and how they see the society's role in the future, the canal and the future of boating in the, right, in the waterway. We highlighted the role of women members of the society during the campaigning years and their role in the running of the organization. Some interesting aspects were the, the barriers the women members had to overcome in order to become involved in the running of the society on equal terms. Um, it also drew a different picture of campaigning before the time of the internet and social media platforms. We digitized all the archives of the society newsletter, Canal News, the main campaigning tool for the society in a format that could allow the text to be searchable online. And at the same time, we upgraded the society's website to accommodate the new material and to be interactive for engagement purposes. We started boat building uh, dinghies, not canal boats, um, in Mary Hill in April this year with service users from Mary Hill Integration Network. After a hard time trying to allocate a suitable place that would host that, such activity for five consecutive days, uh, we, we just couldn't find anywhere to do that. After a lot of searching, we managed to hire the foyer of Kelvin College. The college building is part of the local heritage of the area. We got a mixed ability uh, and age groups and two women, which was great. Uh, we built two boats and four oars that week with the help of two professional boat builders and nine participants. We met every morning at eight and finished at six. Um, there was a language barrier to begin with, which was an issue as there were tasks that were not obvious to explain, but as uh, one of the boat builders told us at the end, and I quote, at the end it was all fine, boat building became our common language. One more week to paint the boats and then we tested them in the canal, which was a very, very exciting occasion. And, and which also proved that we needed less on zeroing and safety on water. We run four workshops on civic journalism with a women's group from the Mary Hill Integration Network and the Women's Center in Mary Hill. Uh, participants inspired by the society's campaigning history learned about activism through social media and how to create powerful video stories and then one minute long and against the clock. They had training from a professional journalist in interviewing, filming for journalism, and in creating short messages uh, with an impact. They used these tools to create messages about the canal. Lunch was a very big part of the activities, um, of all the activities of the project, where people exchanged ideas and memories. Uh, participants remembered using the canal as a swimming pool during lunch, all that. Um, and Using it, as, oh, sorry, using it as a swimming pool uh, as kids and gathering at the banks of, uh, to have lunch. Um, and these are the women that didn't have, uh, they had a negative uh, idea about the canal. Um, and I quote, there would be hundreds of us eating and jumping in and um, they didn't seem to uh, be negative when they were saying these stories, which was interesting. There were some challenges in putting the two groups together, numbers of participants to start with, um, and in some cases, the reluctance of women from the Oasis group, for example, which are the uh, asylum seeker migrant uh, groups, to engage with interviews due, due to their experience with the migration system. The boat, the boat handling sessions were also a lot of fun. They sailed for two hours, having a try at a tiller and learning how a boat moves in the canal areas of caution and how the weather affects the canal and the boat movements. 
they also experience the area from the canal, uh, from the water. And that sparked discussions as to how much the area has changed, obviously due to uh, regeneration and uh, development and building. Uh, for most of the women, being on the boat was a first time experience. The first celebratory event of the project took place in another historic building of Mary Hill. Uh, it's called the Engine Works now. The event gathered over 100 visitors. We invited Shibum, who uh, are based at the Women's Center, and the dancers from uh, the Mary Hill Integration Network to entertain the visitors. We had film screenings from the boat building and civic and journalism workshops, and we handed out awards. Uh, we had an 81-year-old from the Mary Hill uh, Women's Center, and that award, was, that award was the only one she had ever received. So she was really, really pleased about it. Uh, we shared food from the Middle East, very important, everybody loved that, and listened to the participants telling their side of the experience throughout the activities. The event was partly supported by the Refugee uh, Festival of Scotland and became one of their main publicity uh, events for the festival. In Kirkintilloch, the boat building group was gathered by local youth groups in Kirkintilloch, in and around Kirkintilloch. Uh, they used a local charity's boat house to build the boat. The participants were between the age of 17 and 25. Lunch, again, was a very big uh, part of the activity as it was discussed from very early in the morning. What are we having for lunch? From 11 o'clock. During breaks and lunch, there were discussions about the activity, uh, the boats, because they were in the boathouse, uh, the local area and relationships, which um, that, that was uh, very important. Uh, boat building proved to be a good vehicle for personal, of personal development and as the idea of a workshop uh, where kids could go, hang out, and work towards a big project, created an environment of trust and comfort. Uh, working along with the Seagull Trust volunteers also proved to be successful. Being inside the boat house in a boating environment for two weeks, with boats coming in and out all the time, uh, was a unique experience, and participants learned a lot about life with boats, the canal, and being on water. The boat looked distinctly different from all other boats in the canal, and the group came up with a very suitable name. Uh, participants were encouraged to try the boat in the boathouse, and we made sure it was safe for them to do so. The boat co called Wafo, what are we having for lunch, was officially launched at the Eastman Battlefield Canal Festival in August by the Deputy Provost. And during the event, Don Martin, a local uh, historian, informed the young people that this boat building activity was the first one to take place at the same spot in 60 years, at the very same spot. The civic journalism workshops took place in two different community centers in Kankitillo, with participants from GRACE, a mental health aftercare venture where people who have sustained trauma find a place to feel safe, develop skills, and feel confident to resume their life. Working with Grace was a great opportunity to prove the positive role boats and water can have in someone's life, and also be able to share views on the canal and boating from a group with limited chance in experiencing life on water. Canal Craft's legacy has been integrated in the activity planning from the, from the start. So we wanted to create as many opportunities to connect with projects that share the same principles of community heritage, and Canal College is one of them. But I will let Tommy talk about this, because he's uh, a mentor. Thank you. Yeah, Canal College folks, uh, we have uh, two bases, one in Falkirk, one in Inverness. It's a 14-week employability SQA qualification program from 16 to 30-year-olds. They earn, learn new skills such as woodworking, stone masonry, uh, archaeology with uh, the kind help of our partners Archaeology Scotland, uh, heritage conservation, maintenance of boats, skills uh, and water safety and an awful lot more which just be too much to go into. During Canal Craft College, oh sorry, Lena. <laughs> She's dead bossy, honestly. During Canal Craft College, uh, Canal College, 
we've, we've had visits on two occasions to the locations of the induction days to see the operation on the canal, how our repair slipway works, see how engines are maintained, and uh, have a look round the boats. And you see here, uh, very quickly, um, we have our own slipway in Kirk, near Kirkintilloch. They're all having a look at the engines. Some were brave enough to go down in the engine room. Uh, and then we went for a sail, and they had a look at the work being done on this particular boat. It is hoped maybe next year we might have them down doing a bit of scraping and whatnot for our, on our behalf. And I do know that the Maid of the Loch will probably invite us, the, the bowling group, along. Um, sorry, I do apologise. Inverness Bowling and Polker. There's three of us. Sorry there, Charlie. Um, but the bowling group may get some work done on the Maid of the Loch before she starts to sail. Thank you. So we took um, we took the boats uh, to three festivals. In the Glasgow Canal Festival, the boat builders took over the activity, spending a whole day inviting visitors in the boat and telling them all about their work and how much they enjoyed building the boat. Uh, the boats. The event was to the benefit of the migrant community, which had the opportunity to take part in a canal festival in an active way. Um, during C Clyde Bill Festival, uh, for a whole weekend, the boat builders from all groups exhibited their boats in and out of the water, telling visitors the benefits of learning traditional skills and getting familiar with the waterways. Eastern Battersea Council have been, have been very supportive to the project from the very beginning. They offered us an exhibition for canal craft at the co-curated space at the newly developed Heritage Center, where the boat builders worked with the professional curators to develop a very attractive show. The second celebratory event with music, certificates and sign, sign singing took place at the town hall in Kirkintilloch, which also concluded with a big lunch, again, shared with everybody involved in the project, their friends and family. And here we have uh, a short film. 